uh, don't worry about me uh, falling down a little step. Uh, as my, uh, the title of my book says, after the downfall there comes the future. <laughs> It has been said enough now um, uh, about the dialectics of reform and revolution, and that the specific of reformism is not making reforms, but to believe reforms are already enough to change the formation of the society. Um, reformism is not only a phenomenon uh, which uh, must be ascribed to socialist democrats and um, to um, uh, labor policies, uh, but also after the uh, uh, collapse of the uh, socialist system in Eastern Europe, uh, had its own roots within the socialist movement itself, within, uh, even within communist parties. declare themselves further development of Marxism for the 21st century. I don't think that we need another Marxism for the 21st century, but the application of the classicals of the Marxism uh, in the 21st century. Uh, but there are indeed a, a lot of theories uh, who try uh, to replace the classical scheme of Marxist theory of Marxist theory of revolution and uh, changing the formation, uh, the, the societal formation. Uh, some of rather a great influence uh, in, uh, in certain parts of the world, um, others more or less typical uh, for this kind of revisionism uh, in Marxism. I would say uh, one type of this uh, revisionist uh, renew attempt to renew Marxism uh, is that uh, of people who uh, try to uh, replace uh, the center part of Marxist theory, which is uh, the consideration of the mode of production by uh, referring to the mode of distribution. Uh, by changing the mode of distribution, you will never change the type of society. You will change, change the type of society if you change the mode of production. Uh, Hochschild and Cottrell, uh, who try uh, to solve certain problems of socialism by computerizing the distribution sector. That is not Marxism, that is another concept. Okay, one has, can have another concept, but uh, they shouldn't say that is a, a, a movement, uh, an amendment of, of uh, uh, Marxism. Werner uh, Diederich, um, who, uh, who created the, the term uh, Marxism for the 21st century, and who has, as uh, Cuban colleagues uh, told me, a great influence in Latin America, and especially uh, as uh, um, uh, one of the counselors of Chavez in, in Venezuela. He also wants to solve the general problems uh, and the general contradictions within the problems of the development of the uh, production mode uh, by a, a, a form of uh, democratizing uh, the form of distribution. That is not a, a way of solution for uh, our problems. Those are not reforms. Those are um, uh, denials of a revolutionary process, I would say. Um, in Germany, we have uh, uh, still a lot of influence uh, of uh, the so-called Frankfurter School um, and uh, another type uh, which is very similar to it, that of the um, uh, magazine The Argument, uh, uh, edited by Wolfgang Fritz Haug. They want to reduce Marxism to criticism. Uh, 
they say there is no society will be a perfect society and the role of Marxism is only in any society how it develops itself uh, to criticize uh, the, uh, this development in its uh, uh, faults and uh, uh, wrong ways uh, but it has not to develop a positive uh, vision uh, of that what should be replaced to that criticized society because any other society which will replace it uh, will also be um, uh, imperfect and has to be criticized. Uh, this is uh, just a, a negative form um, um, of ideology. Um, <coughs> it is part, an essential part, naturally, of our uh, attitude to, a, to an existing uh, society, but it cannot replace as a positive aspects of a new society uh, which are developed uh, and elaborated uh, by Marxist theory. Um, a very great influence within the German Communist Party has uh, that Munich Institute uh, for uh, Social and Economic Theories uh, which uh, uh, concentrates on that a process of globalization uh, developed um, uh, from, uh, from the capitalists for um, undermining uh, the, the national um, um, uh, revolutionary uh, struggle um, of um, uh, socialists uh, because the process of globalization is a process which began in the 19th century um, with capitalism at all and naturally it has now a new stage of intensity. But it is not another thing that those uh, globalization of which Marx already spoke when he spoke about the, the development of the Weltmark, world market. Uh, but uh, to say that this is a new stage of uh, uh, capitalist um, uh, integration of the world and that therefore uh, national struggle against national capital is superfluous and we only need to, um, uh, to fight uh, the, inter the transnational capital uh, that is an, uh, it is an <coughs> economic error and it is a political error. And John Foster has uh, pointed out uh, this morning very clearly uh, that uh, so-called transnational <coughs> capitalism <laughs> Uh, is always um, connected uh, with national states and with national uh, uh, with the activities of national states uh, who um, um, uh, support and, and are the background uh, for the activities of the transnational capital. Um, to stress only this one moment of uh, present international economy which naturally is a, is a real moment, these is transnational uh, transactions. Um, to stress it only and uh, to replace national uh, class struggle uh, by an idea of, of, uh, of international um, uh, confrontation uh, which doesn't have place really. Uh, that, I mean, uh, a weakening uh, of, the, um, of the fight of the working classes uh, in each country, in, uh, in each nations. Uh, we have also within uh, the German New Left uh, uh, a tendency to replace uh, 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 Marxist analysis by a neo Keynesianism uh, um, uh, in economy. Uh, and I discussed with uh, Oscar Lafontaine. Uh, about these things and he says no uh, we don't want to be socialists uh, we want state intervene, uh, intervention in certain uh, fields we want state intervention um, uh, uh, to serve uh, certain living standard for the, for the working classes um, but uh, socialism is a, is a far away vision which, which is not our vision but they um, uh, interpret themselves as the left and they want to gather uh, even the revolutionary left uh, on their 
um, uh, level on their field. And that is more than uh, proposing reforms, which would be the, the function of, a, of such a party in a, in a German parliament, <coughs> uh, but to, uh, to um, uh, paralyze the revolutionary um, uh, fight uh, within uh, uh, our country. Quite, no, quite another, and not Marxist, and not uh, feeling itself as Marxist, um, and not Marxist uh, form uh, to uh, undermine the consciousness, the class consciousness of the working class, is even very influential, uh, evidently in uh, South America, as I was told by colleagues there, uh, that conception of Tony Negri, uh, there are no more classes, there is only a multitude. And the multitude has other structures as a class, uh, and therefore class struggle is obsolete. Uh, you see, we have a lot of theories, and so this is only uh, examples of them, um, uh, who, uh, which um, uh, are uh, tending uh, to um, uh, replace Marxism classical Marxism, by uh, alternative theories, uh, most of which are pretended to be a, a development of Marxist uh, theories, but which indeed do um, uh, violate uh, the, the central uh, points uh, of uh, Marxist uh, theory of society. Uh, as I pointed out this morning, I think uh, there are certain essentials uh, which must be fulfilled of a theory, is a Marxist theory or not. Uh, that is valid for any theory. Any theory has a certain amount of presuppositions from which they are developing their um, uh, theoretical structure. Uh, these uh, uh, axioms of Marxism are, as I pointed out this morning, um, uh, the questions of the uh, private property of production means, because producing its reproduction by work is a specific human characteristics, uh, is uh, the division of labor, the uh, generating of uh, surplus, uh, that means profits, and the accumulation of the capital. Those are the, uh, the I would say, the pillars of the building of uh, 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 Marxist theory. Uh, if I say there are certain uh, presuppositions or axioms of a theory uh, which cannot be uh, uh, left aside if you develop a theory. Then I say we have a certain uh, uh, scheme, theoretical scheme, and this theoretical scheme is as long valid as the uh, type of society to which it responds is still existing. This general elementary scheme uh, of Marxism is still valid because the structure of capitalism is still valid, is still permanent existing. It is uh, uh, naturally developing in its uh, periods and stages and, and uh, in, in certain aspects, but uh, in its center, those elements uh, which I uh, summarized uh, as, as the uh, essentials of Marxist theory, those elements are still valid for capitalism from the 19th century to the 21st century. And therefore, I think we don't, don't dare to speak of a Marxism for the 21st century. We can say within the 21st century, Marxism has to answer from its basis, out of its basis, to answer new developments within capitalism. But uh, insisting on it, that 
it's a general structure of capitalism is naturally that of the accumulation of the capital, of the generating of surplus, uh, of uh, the private property and production means, and so on. That didn't change. In, in so far, the uh, Marxist uh, paradigm uh, of uh, theoretical explanation of our society does not change. It can only be modified in, its, uh, in certain aspects. Um, if you call this orthodox, you may call it orthodox, uh, but uh, orthodox means really a translated right meaning. <laughs> Orthodoxa. Orthodoxa. Uh, well, and uh, I wouldn't say without a certain amount of dogmatic uh, uh, consistent, uh, there will be no theory at all. Theories uh, will uh, fall uh, opinions uh, without, without foundation if there is not uh, such a um, uh, theoretical um, uh, basis, a theoretical foundation of it. And in so far, I think that all forms of reform who try to replace this general paradigm of uh, Marxism are firstly no Marxism. Secondly, they fail to answer the problems of our time. Because if you take it uh, in, in terms of the philosophy of history, uh, Marxism is the only theory, I say, uh, uh, the only theory which consistently answers to the problems of our time, because it uh, answers uh, uh, to the problems of our time by going to the, uh, to the last reasons, to the last causes by which uh, all the problems of our um, uh, present time uh, come out. Uh, and all other theories, you may take whichever you want, uh, answer only on partial problems. And they may answer on partial problems uh, rather reasonably, uh, but they don't um, um, uh, seize the whole package of um, interrelations between the several uh, uh, regions uh, of uh, our existence. If we uh, if we accept that Marxism uh, in its general um, outlines is the correct theoretical representation of the societal pro processes in our time and a correct uh, sketching, uh, designing an answer on these uh, contradictions of uh, this time, if we accept that, then we cannot um, uh, uh, affirm uh, or consent with uh, uh, attempts uh, to create a new Marxism. Then we must cling to our theory and to the uh, practical consequences of our theory. If you think you can um, uh, eliminate uh, the injustices of the world, uh, by um, uh, uh, reforms like reformation of the distribution sector, uh, you uh, will not uh, find uh, a method how to enforce that because the forces uh, who own the production means are always uh, stronger than those who uh, can represent the interests of the consumers. And no one who has power will be ready to, over, uh, to, to give his power to, to other instances. That is the reason why all reforms will not uh, uh, lead to a, to a consequence, to an aim, if they, don't, uh, uh, if they are not realized by a revolutionary transition, transforming. And therefore, uh, the uh, concept of Marxist politics that at the end of a long process 
in which reforms prepare this transition, there is necessary a revolutionary act for the political power uh, is uh, overtaken by a new class and uh, forms a new formation of society. Thank you.